<laughs> Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Comfort Level Podcast. I'm Addie, and I'm here with... Sam. Oh, shoot. We I, just kind of say it. You can no, say, okay, up. get in where you get in. Maddie's mad now. Oh, no. I'm, I'm not mad. mad. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Uh, I'm Brandy. <laughs> Maybe we should do that again. That was actually really weird. It was weird. so weird. I didn't know what to do, because <laughs> like, uh, you looked at her, and I'm like, I, I was saying it while you were looking at her. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, I shouldn't have done that. And then you looked you at me. You can say whatever. Pissed. Okay. No, okay. Okay. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Comfort Level Podcast. I'm Maddie, and I'm here with Yvonne. <laughs> <laughs> I knew I was going to have this. I'm like, yeah, I'm going to look yeah. at you, Sam. I was ready. <laughs> I was ready. I'm ready. I'm Sam. <laughs> and today we're here with Yvonne, like she said. So let's get into these uh, stories. And also for our audience, I think we're starting to get a little bit big that. <laughs> We should have a nickname for them, like our next story! <laughs> I don't know. What do you guys... The what Comforters. Comforters! The comforters? What? Blankets? For the what the, what's the difference between a comforter and a blanket? <laughs> no, the difference. Comforter is like heavier, yeah. isn't it? No. Well, they should be called the comforters. Like throw pillows? I don't know. Throw pillows. <laughs> the throw, throw pillows. pillows. <laughs> I don't know if I like any either of those. Okay. I need some All more right. creativity in the comments. I need to... Cause yeah, if you guys need a nickname, tell us what you like. Yes. Tell us what you want. Mm-hmm. To Drop it down in the comments. I like below. comforters. It doesn't have to be a couch reference or. <laughs> Is this, isn't this Our a little comfort Ottomans. podcast? <laughs> <laughs> no, I I literally hate that. That's so stupid. Hey, all you Ottomans, <laughs> like and subscribe. That's so disrespectful <laughs> too. <laughs> They're cute little Ottomans. You, you put your feet on Ottomans. on Ottomans. Oh yeah, you're right. Am I the asshole for telling my husband and his family not to call me a nickname? So my name is Lucy, 28 female. My husband, 31 male, cool has always it is a pretty cool name. Has always been super fond of nicknames and has given me plenty of them. They constantly change and I have never minded any of the ones that he's given me before. They're all quite harmless, usually food or animals related, but they tend to stick for a while. His family also uses nicknames. They occasionally give me one too. It's often the same one as my husband uses if it isn't too sappy. Again, I don't mind. In fact, I usually find it quite cute and endearing until recently my husband started calling me Lulu. Let me give you some context. I was called Lulu growing up exclusively by my mom and she passed away not long before I met my husband. I took her loss pretty hard. I told him that it had a lot of emotional significance for me and that it doesn't feel right to hear anyone else say it. Mm -hmm. He respected that for years and so did his family. But recently his sister has been referring me as Lulu whenever I wasn't there, according to what I've been told. And I guess he naturally picked up on it. It's irritating because it's not like he forgot about the reason behind it. He'll hesitate before saying it, like he's trying to see how I'll react. I've reminded him calmly a couple of times that I would appreciate him to not call me that, and there's plenty of other things that I don't mind him calling me, nothing that has that emotional weight. The other day, he said that he didn't see the big deal anymore and had been some years and that I should just be over it by now, that it's just a nickname. He said it lightly, like he was trying to let me down easy, but it stung. Maybe I overreacted, but I was hurt by it. I packed a bag and I'm currently staying with my sister. He and his family texted saying that I'm doing a lot over a little nickname and that I'm thinking maybe they're right. I want to get past this because it feels petty at this point. Am I the asshole? <laughs> in, not in the story specifically, but just in general, how much agency do you have over your nickname do you get to choose your nickname that people have for you i think you get to voice if you like it or not okay yeah okay i do agree with that but i'm like we all like make fun of people who make up their nickname and say call me this Mm -hmm. like ottomans yeah (laughs) Okay. Let's let the audience say what they think about Ottomans. What does the audience yeah, think? Yes. Audience, you like Ottomans. Everyone knows you no. like Ottomans. They hate it. I think that's where I'm on your side where it's like, if I don't like the nickname, mm. go back to the drawing board. This has like, like a, a significant effect on me. You got to use something different. But I'm in the awesome thing where I'm like, you don't get to choose your nicknames. Mm-hmm. We all call you crazy madman because That's you're a crazy woman, true. and we've always said that. Nobody's and ever said that to me. Just, oh, I guess we've never said it to you. That's how we talk about you. That's Ooh, crazy no, madman. That's, that's fine. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's cool. Crazy <laughs> madman. Yeah, yeah, I don't. That's one of my other things controversial. I think you're in the right. You're not the asshole for not liking this being. This is traumatic for you. You don't need to hear that word spoken about you. So, 
I don't necessarily think it's traumatic. I think that like she holds endearment that her mom only called her yeah. dad. So like maybe there is, I don't know, like a lot of emotions come up when someone else calls her that because it then reminds her of her mom. I think her husband um, crossed her boundaries by not respecting how she voiced it. But at the same time, I think she, her leaving her house to go to her yeah. sister's is avoiding the problem. Like, I think it's just then, like, I think all, I think there's a communication issue going on there that, like, if you told him, why is he not listening to you? Right. When you told him, were you, like, was it joking or were you serious? And then also that, like, uh, yeah, like, just talk, talk to your husband. Like, I, you know, I'm not necessarily in this situation, but, like, running away from that problem and going to your sister's house is not really going to solve anything and also maybe there's something else going on that like maybe he's been crossing your boundaries and this is just crossing the line I feel like also with nicknames it takes a while for it to be like kind of common use you mm -hmm. know like she said he recently started calling her that and then just went on about it you know so in a way, I'm like kind of looking at the husband, like, how are you just gonna just keep do like it? Just, it takes a second for a, a nickname to stick. Like <laughs> we were coming up with nicknames on our, our trip, and we were like, "Were you at a meeting to do it?" Yeah, no. <laughs> well, we were talking to one of our friends. He's like, "Yeah, I'm gonna give all y'all nicknames," and then he went to <laughs> Yvonne and gave her. A horrendous <laughs> nickname, and I was like, "That's." I forget what it was. Yeah. It was so bad, but I was like, "Why don't you just?" What was bad? I need to hear what, what was it? I can't remember what it was, but I was like, "Why don't you just call her Vondissimo?" And, <laughs> really and it did. stuck, and that's what we started doing. Everyone's like Vondissimo. Oh, that's good. But his, yeah, nobody. Yeah, oh, nobody. <laughs> <laughs> nobody, nobody caught on to it. So it was like, you know, if it's a, if it's not a, if it's a nickname that's. I would express not liked. It's kind of hard to just keep saying the nickname, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's like. Well, that's where I think I'm on a little bit on the other side is like everyone I've dated, I've always come with nicknames, but I'm like, I like pet names, but I don't like babe. I don't like boo. I like making something that's funny to me that they, they might get annoyed at the beginning, but then they'll get used to it. Like I dated a girl. We had watched the movie with Judy Hopps, the rabbit. Uh, I forgot what movie oh, that uh, was. Oh, Zootopia. Yeah, Zootopia. And in the movie, I was joking, I'm like, <laughs> Judy. <laughs> and so I started calling her Bunny because I'm like, I'm attracted to rabbits. I'm attracted to Bunny. So I kept calling her Bunny. <laughs> and she was getting know. mad <laughs> through it. But then she just got used to like, now I don't like it when you don't call me Bunny. Because I'm like, yeah, it's funny to me. It's You didn't like it at the beginning, but it's your nickname. You didn't wait, let it cook. Wait, wait, yeah. wait, wait. You just said you're attracted to Rob. I'm attracted to Judy Hopps. <laughs> if you watch you told me you don't think Judy Hopps is fine in that movie, then you're crazy. Judy Hopps is hopping <laughs> in that movie. So they have whole TikTok pages <laughs> for her. There definitely it's, it's, is. It's, it's, it's really bad. I might be having a couple fan pages of Judy Hopps. The rabbit hole goes deep. <laughs> <laughs> oh. There's multiple meanings to that. Yeah, it's it a little inappropriate yeah, there. Also, what about convert convertibles? Convertibles? Like I said, a convertible is convertible. She really wants to get away from Ottoman. She she hates how good Ottomans are. She's trying Ottomans, to think of Ottoman <laughs> is not good. Ottoman You're not gonna cook, try and man. lie Let about it. Brandon, you don't even like Ottomans. You're the one that objected it first. <laughs> but what about convertible? Yeah, convertible. convertible. I'm trying to give people better options. Anyway, I agree with I agree with Yvonne and what she said in the beginning. I think that um I mean Definitely communication is important when it comes to instead of leaving. But what do you do when he is not listening to you? Because this isn't the first time that he called her Lulu and she's corrected him. Yeah. This is like, and now he's trying, now he's like, I know it makes you uncomfortable. I'm trying to do it. Yeah. My family's trying to do it because we think it's cute. And like you said, it's not traumatic, but it's just like, no, that's the word that my mom called me. I'm not ready for you to call me that. Like, what does he do? What does she do then? Maybe they just need, because she said that he's had different nicknames and like why. Just stick to one nickname. Well, Make they're not easier. sticking. Maybe it's not like, <laughs> I'm not getting the vibe of who you are. Like a good nickname is like. Yeah, I don't have nicknames. 
Mm. <laughs> so, but um, you don't have any for anyone else. You don't have any for yourself. Yeah, no one really calls me any nicknames. Bondissimo. Bon oh, yeah. Bon yeah. Bon but has, has anyone called me that since the trip? No, I guess I was yeah. only cruise. Yeah. Yeah. Cruise talk. Cruise talk. I want a nickname. Because <laughs> you have a vibe. You have an anti nickname vibe. You're like. <laughs> I wish you would call me that again. <laughs> <laughs> no, she doesn't. <laughs> mm. No. Uh, Yvonne does have a very chill, like, professional vibe, though. So yeah. I don't know if it's, like, when she always is, like, chill and professional, if it's, like, cool to be, like, what's up, like, Vaughn. I just don't like Vaughn. Someone yeah. tried to call me Vaughn. No one called you Vovo or... Oh. Vonnie. Vonnie D. <laughs> Vonnie D. Why the Vonnie D? D? Where's the D coming from? Was it? No. Vonnie K. I was thinking Polly D. I was thinking, oh. I was mixing Vinny and Polly D. Oh, okay. The Vonuation. Instead of the situation. <laughs> Vonuation. Vonuation. Oh, so, man. top comment here, not the asshole. If nicknames aren't a big deal, then why can't he let this nickname drop? Why do he and his family have to keep that one nickname that causes you pain? Why isn't that a big deal? Mm -hmm. You're the person who gets to decide when you're over your mom's death, not him. I mean, so. Yeah, I agree with that. Facts. Because I, I think my main thing with, with any of those situations is where it's, there are a lot of things that are not really that big a deal. But if it's a big deal for you, then I just respect that. It might not be a big deal to the random world, but if for you it's a problem, then why am I making this a big deal? Why am I pushing this? That's where I would lean you know, on it. No, I agree. And yeah. it's like if you voice your boundaries, especially if it's your husband, mm -hmm. your life partner. Yeah, your husband should be like, hey, okay. Yeah, okay. I'll yeah. Move on. it'd probably be super annoying to have, <laughs> to have him like call <laughs> You want like social media or something like, like this, this next, next story? story. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta be confident when you're doing yours. <laughs> I don't know. I just started laughing. I mean, like it's. I was like, they're probably gonna figure it out pretty quickly here. <laughs> well, yeah. As soon as you start laughing. <laughs> okay. Am I the asshole for letting people know through social media the reason why I wasn't at my dad's wedding? <laughs> what? <laughs> Da, 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 da. Oh man, I love petty. <laughs> hopefully these are fun petty ones. Yes, yeah, hopefully. I think most of them are. I don't think any of them are. Any good okay. <laughs> I read them earlier this morning. I already forgot about them. Okay. So. But like, it's perfect for reactions because yeah. I'm like, oh my god, you just crazy. Okay with it, Brandon? <laughs> I don't know. I just have a feeling this one's just gonna be just out of the pocket, yeah. just, just just a little for bit. No reason. Just a little bit. Um. Am I the asshole for letting people know through social media the reason why I wasn't at my dad's wedding? I, female 18, was always really close to my dad, closer to my mom, but I often visited my dad about three to four times a week. And a few years ago, he started dating Anna. Anna and I always got along, and when my dad proposed, I was really happy to see Anna, and I thought she would be a really good stepmom. Well, a few weeks before the wedding, after I bought everything, dress, shoes, etc., my dad and Anna said they needed to talk to me Anna and my dad decided to have a child-free wedding, which I get especially for young kids. Well, turns out child-free means no one under 18, and on the day of the wedding, I was still going to be 17. Therefore, <laughs> I'm not going to be allowed at the wedding, because Anna wants to stay true to the child-free rule, even for the daughter of the groom and her about-to-be stepdaughter. Oh, God. The funny thing is, my 18th birthday was just two days after the wedding. No! <laughs> But still, I wasn't allowed to go. The wedding was just last weekend, the 12th, and my birthday was yesterday, the 14th. I haven't talked to Anna or my dad since they told me I couldn't attend the wedding since I wasn't an adult. My mom ended up taking me on a birthday vacation, and yesterday, I posted birthday pictures on Facebook and said, finally an adult. I'm so glad my dad and Anna didn't allow me at their wedding since I was 18. I feel way more mature since yesterday. Oh, wow. <laughs> okay, I like it. The family was freaking out, asking if it was true true and bashing my dad and Anna. I later got a bunch of texts from my dad and Anna calling me immature and a selfish brat, and that's why I was too immature to be at their wedding. <gasps> I was talking to some friends, and they said that I was kind of the asshole for doing that, and that I should just let it go. Am I the asshole? No. no. We Absolutely got a petty not. Patty. <laughs> yeah, that... a baby be petty. Yes. P E to, to the, the T T Y P. P to the T T Y. 
I thought you guys were going to keep going. Like, okay, ladies, now let's get in for me. What? <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, that's great. I, I'm all for the pettiness. This mm-hmm. is great. But I think if you're going to be petty, you might as well rack up on that whole birthday thing, too. Be like, you know, you should send me something so I feel a little bit more mature. That's just my personal two cents. <laughs> oh I think that's what she should have done, too. But nah, nah. But in all seriousness, uh, I mean, yeah, she's young still, too. So, like, that's type of petty stuff. That's okay. Yeah, you're 18. That's fine. Yeah. Yeah, you can still get away with it. And that's a real gripe. Yeah. <laughs> they right. made up this. They made up the rule. This is not some societal thing. You're like, we just made up this thing called childless wedding and then... You no, can't that, be here. That is actually a thing. You're not supposed to be so here. So I'm like, you decide. You could have just said, you're the exception. My yeah, daughter. My own daughter. <laughs> my own daughter. Because I'm like, I don't even care that your birthday was like right after. It makes yeah. it funnier. But I'm like, it doesn't matter. I'm like, my daughter could be 12 years old. My daughter's still coming to the wedding. There yeah. might be the older kids. You're going to have no fun. But yeah. you, you can come to my wedding, daughter. Right. Because right. I don't think any other guests are like, why is your daughter here? Yeah, they're like, like and then, you said only adults <laughs> could be here. Yeah, another <laughs> thing. Yeah. Well, like, what is a 17 year old going to do? I, I understand, like, maybe like a, a three, four year old because you don't want them yeah. running around and crying. But what, at 17, you. All, all people do at this age is just kind of be on their phones. So yeah. It's like, bro, what, did, what, what could a seventeen-year-old have possibly done to make this wedding not? Especially if you're the only seventeen-year-old there, you're yeah. like, I'm and, not going to really contribute or. And imagine helping the stepmom plan the wedding, and then like, yeah, you're not invited. Getting the dress, like they see you. Why getting did the you dress. have to get the dress? <laughs> yeah, so far, and like, nope. Now you're just like. Yeah, I mean, I would have to assume that they were there. I mean, they were probably talking about it. If they, if this was going to happen, why wouldn't they? I mean, it is a completely stupid rule, but why wouldn't they have discussed this way earlier? Of like, hey, like, just so you know, like, we're not. I don't gonna know if do the rule's stupid. I don't. I don't think I'm. Well, for her. Yeah, for her. For her being I'm seventeen. I'm not really against a, a kidless wedding. That seems. Well, no, me... th- but it's their rule. That's yeah, the, yeah, that's yeah, what yeah, I'm specifically yeah. talking. Because I do agree with that one. I mean, if people don't want to have kids at their wedding and they, they want to go crazy, then yeah. yeah. Because like Brandon was saying, especially a four-year-old, it's different having a four-year-old than a two days away from 18-year-old. That's so silly. I just feel like Anna had it out for the daughter or something. Cause, and and I'm really surprised the dad went along with it to yeah. be like, yeah, yeah, sorry. These dads just be out here going along with like, what? Yeah. evil stepmoms. <laughs> Seriously. Evil wicked witch from the West. <laughs> hey, man. hey, shout out. Um, shout out wicked witch from the West. Wicked? Wicked? Yeah. The show, yeah. Oh, Shadow Wicked. It's a really good show. I didn't know what Wicked was about until like two months ago when I heard about all the Ariana Grande drama, and then that's when somebody told me they talked about what the Wicked show was oh. about. I was like, I knew it was like a spinoff of The Wizard of Oz, but I didn't Wicked know it was like so I didn't know it was like the Wicked Witch's origin story. Yeah, yeah. Oh. and she's not that bad. She's good. Uh, but that turns bad. Yeah, because of things beyond her control. Mm. The real villain is the guy. The Oz. The Oz. Oh, <laughs> yeah, really? he's the real bad guy. Mm. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Check it out. Wicked. <laughs> <laughs> Theaters near you. <laughs> Whenever they finish filming because yeah. of the strikes, you know, so they stop filming. But oh, uh, after strikes. Yeah. Pay people what they're valued. Yeah. Oh <laughs> Not the asshole. What kind of man doesn't have his own child at his wedding? Anyway, they made the choice, and if they believe that it was the right choice, they should have no issue about it being publicly known. Right. People might well assume you weren't there because you disapproved of his new wife or chose a vacation instead. Ensuring people know why you weren't there saves your own reputation. I feel like Anna knew. Like, I feel like Anna, like, when's your birthday? And then put the <laughs> wedding right before just to rub it Two in days. Even yeah. More. That, yeah, that is kind Just of to petty. rub it in even No, it should have been one day. day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And, like, I feel like with all your guests, you would have told them, like, months before, no kids. But then why did you wait to tell right. tell her? Well, the other thing, too, is, like, I think your point is actually more wicked, shout out, than it seems. Because <laughs> if she chose that date, so her dad might not be able to spend time with her on her, work, on her birthday if, like, the wife is like, let's go on vacation for our honeymoon yeah. or, like, for our wedding date. So now that day is so close to her birthday that they might be gone a lot of the times yeah. celebrating for Ooh. a vacation compared to her, him being able to spend time with his daughter. So yeah. maybe it was a lot more intentional than you think. I don't know why the dad wicked. would have approved that. It's like, no, it's too close to my daughter's birthday. 
let's do like the weekend before right. or something. Wow. Especially to, the 18th birthday. Oh, yeah. uh, weekend after. So, so then she would be 18, you know? Yeah. Yeah, this just seems sinister. And you got called out and now you're embarrassed and you're mad. Yeah. Anna, you suck. The dash look into Dad, you getting suck. a vasectomy. Oh, like this next story. Oh, I didn't feel it. I didn't feel it. I felt it. I was like, that's such a weird thing. That, I was like, that's such a weird thing for Yvonne to say. And I was like, oh, wait. So what did you say? A vasectomy. No, what did you say? I, I said the dash should look into getting a vasectomy. Oh, <laughs> oh my God, that's good. But you have to say like this next story. Okay. Because that was too smooth. Can I do it? No, it's good. No, that was good. Oh, okay. But sometimes when you're too smooth, no one gets it. (laughs) We say like this thing. We have to say like this thing. Because a lot of the times I'm the one that doesn't catch it. So I'll just keep talking after what you said. And then they'll be like, like this next story. Like this next story. The button. Maddie, like this next story. Okay. Am I the asshole for telling my brother's girlfriend about him having a vasectomy when she was telling me about their plans to settle down and have a family? (laughs) More secret vasectomies. <laughs> I need to hear that again. Am I the asshole for telling my brother's girlfriend that he had a vasectomy when she was telling me about their plans to settle down and have a family? My brother, Mark Forty, won the lottery when he was 20. Yes, It was $1,000 a week for life. Shut up, Mark. He was young and wanted to travel. He dropped out of school and he spent his entire adulthood basically seeing the world. He comes home to visit every few years and we FaceTime with him when he is near a signal. He doesn't travel first class or stay in expensive resorts, so he has actually built up some nice savings. He came home with his girlfriend, Haley, 28 this year. They met when they got stuck in South America during the pandemic, and she has been traveling since she graduated from university, and she works out of a laptop. I, female 54, live in the same city where I was born. I love it here. I love being close to my parents and my grandchildren and most of my siblings. Mark hated being the youngest of eight and always swore that he would not have kids. Our parents were older when they had him and they didn't have the energy for him, truth be told. Mark came home when he was 30 and told us all that he had a vasectomy and that he would not be contributing to the world population. He just came up. I have a vasectomy. They're like, whoa, Mark. (laughs) Quiet down there. They're like, how are you, Mark? (laughs) Good to see you. I have a vasectomy. (laughs) Lovely weather we're having. (laughs) Haley is a pretty young thing, and she is also intelligent and sweet. I can understand why anyone would fall in love with her. I think mm. OP is in love with Haley. Haley. No, I'm just kidding. For definitely sure. in love with Haley. For sure. We were having a family barbecue to celebrate Mark being in town. There were maybe 30 people in my parents' yard and house. I was talking to Haley about her future plans now that the world is opened up again. She told me that she was ready to settle down and start a family. I asked if they were planning on adopting from one of the countries that they had traveled to or if they would try in North America. She said that they had talked about it and would be having at least one child of their own. This may be where I fucked up. I asked where Mark got his vasectomy reversed or if they were having in vitro fertilization. I know that you can harvest sperm from a testicle even after a vasectomy. She went very quiet and went over to Mark. They spoke and they left. (laughs) Mark called me later that night to scream at me for ruining his life. He hadn't told her and he was planning on just continuing to travel and maybe adopt if they decided on it. He said I shared private medical information and that he never wanted to see me again. Oof. The Hippocratic. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I apologized over and over. I seriously had no way of knowing that he was planning a future with this girl without telling her a pretty big piece of the puzzle might be missing. I feel bad for him, but I think he should have told her. Am I the asshole? You should have definitely told her. It's the yeah. brother, no, the brother-sister no, How confidentiality. are you planning a whole family... Yeah, that's the fire. No, I'm saying Mark should have told yeah, her. Yeah, Mark. No, yeah. But uh, is there confidentiality? Because I'm like, well, I don't know. Well, yeah, we all have siblings. Yeah. And they have partners. And there's stuff you like, I can't. I can't tell them. But I feel but she like, don't know. Yeah, but I feel like she probably assumed she knew if you if you're yeah, if they're having, having those kids, conversations, yeah. you probably yeah. like, hey, I got a vasectomy. Like, <laughs> you have to. You're like, how's that going to work? Yeah. That's why I'm like, I don't think you were, you're really the asshole because that is a normal thing. You're like, dang, y'all having all these, time. y'all talked about it. So yeah. you're like, so yeah, how about the vasectomy? I know that. He came and told us, so I assumed he told you. Yeah, and how can he be mad that she told her when he told everyone? Like, who else knows? So it's not a secret. Was he going to lie about yeah. it because the way he said he was just going to yeah. keep traveling? Yeah. Like, was he going to just... <laughs> 
play it by ear. Yeah. <laughs> and to me, I think that's really messed up because I feel like a lot of times when women are trying to have babies, usually they're the ones that are blamed for being infertile when sometimes it can be the guy right. who's the problem of right. them not being able to have babies. So it sounds like he was totally willing and ready Just to be okay like, I that. think it's you. Yeah. I think you're the one he could, that's he could infertile. Be the guy's like, it could be me. Yeah. He could like it could be my sperm could not be swinging, or I could be have a. a I think he was just gonna keep <laughs> swinging his willy yeah. around, and then you know, seeing that it's not gonna work, convince her somehow to be like, we should adopt. It's uh, fine. Let's just keep traveling. Well, I just, so I think that's pretty messed up. I watched this show on Apple TV, uh, Silo, mm-hmm. where in the first episode, it's like a big mystery. But in the thing, they're like. They can only certain people can have kids because they live underground, so they're like trying to limit the population. And people apply to get pregnant, and when they apply, it gets approved, and then the doctor takes out the birth control. But they had to be on a sheet, and he just pretended to take out the birth control because they didn't want some people to have babies. Oh. But like it's that thing where they're like, so they try for a year to get pregnant, and if they don't, then they get back on birth control. But in their minds, they're like, I'm off of it. We're trying, and they're getting depressed. They're like, I've applied three times, and I never had it because they're not taking out their birth control to let them be pregnant. I'm like, that's so messed up to give them the hope, but there's no chance that it could actually happen because we lied to you. Yeah. That's, that's what, what I think he's doing. doing. That's what he's doing. Yeah, and it's very selfish Oof. of him because, like, she's 28. She's ready to be start a family. And, well, if she continues dating him, it's such a waste. It's definitely a waste. Yeah, yeah she, especially if she wants to have her own kid because they can definitely adopt. But if if it's important for her to have her own baby, then, yeah, she's going to be I just feel so bad for her because he has he has no concept of that affecting her in any way. Like you said, bringing up like making somebody depressed because they feel like there's something wrong with yeah. them when it's like, no, bro, like you're you're literally lying, saying that you've had a facet. He's like, like I didn't not bring saying, that up. I didn't say that. I swore. I, I didn't tell you. I didn't tell you. She's oh, like, you, oh, no, I would have done. You're just not listening to me. Yeah. You're just not listening. <laughs> and, I, and I feel like, you know, that situation, <laughs> not, you're not listening to me. To, you're like, yeah. I know you didn't tell me out of a second. I would remember that. And like, no, I'm pretty fault. sure. I, I did. First date, I was like, yeah, of a second, man. And then I went to <laughs> Europe. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. It's really bad. Yeah, it's really guy. bad. And I'm yeah. like, OP, yes, if she knew, if they knew that, you know, the his girlfriend didn't know about it, then yeah. But it's like, it came up, like Yvonne said, it came up in conversation. You assume if you're trying to have a baby, you're like, okay, so you're, you know, the, it was reverse or you're adopting. Yeah. Like, I don't think they're the asshole. I think it was a mistake. And it's his fault that he brought his girlfriend around his family yeah. who he didn't tell had a vasectomy. And she's going around and be like, hey, we're about to have a baby. I think in the situation, what if she if she did know? Mm-hmm. Is, is there a reason? Because I'm thinking we've had stories where people are like, I'll tell them. If you don't tell them, I'm going to tell them because I feel like they should know. Would you ever be in that situation where you're like, I'm going to tell the other person. I know, and I know they don't know. Would you tell them? I feel like in this situation, it's so messed up. I would threaten to be like, I'm going yeah. to tell them. Because I wouldn't want to be in that situation, especially if somebody else was an outsider and they knew about it and they let me think that and kind of be gaslit in a way for years. I think that would be really messed up and I wouldn't want to be friends with them either. Or, you know, I wouldn't want to talk to them because I'm like, you knew that he was doing this to me and you didn't want to tell me why. It's almost like bread coming in a sense, too, because it's like she has that hope like you were talking Mm -hmm. about. So it's like. The fact that he won't ever be able to fulfill that hope, it's like, why are you keeping her around? Yeah. Mm-hmm. If that's especially if it's something that she's expressed that she really truly wants, and it's something that you could have done. And it's something that she wants from you. Right. You're just bread coming along for your own selfish intent. But that, I think that's my thing I don't understand is from his side, like why why? Like literally, why? Yeah, I don't, I don't understand that. Like, why would you, why would you put someone in a scenario like that where they're waiting for something? Yeah, and you cannot provide it. Like, well, I think the best case scenario is he actually really loves her, but he doesn't want to lose her, and he thinks this will lose her, so he's just gonna lie. Like, that's the best thing I could think of. Is like. I love you so much. I'm scared to lose you. I, I'm scared to tell you the truth because I think you'll leave me. Yeah. If that happens. But the worst case scenario would be that he's just he's selfish monster. and he wants his cake and eat it too. He's like, I do want to be with this woman, <laughs> but I know that she wants kids. I don't want kids. 
So I'm just going to string her along until she figures it out, and hopefully she's too invested in the relationship, and she'll be like, well, let's adopt. Yeah. You know what karma is? Is vasectomies aren't 100 percent like they can reverse themselves, mm -hmm. and like that happened. He actually did get her pregnant, and he was like, oh, how does this, <laughs> how does this happen? <laughs> <What>? <laughs> you cheated on me. <laughs> <laughs> So top comment. Um, so they talked about it and he didn't bring it up on his own terms at all. Wouldn't that have been the time for him to tell his partner about the vasectomy? And then somebody else said, I worked at an IVF clinic. Wife had every test in the book for six months before her husband finally did a semen analysis, which showed that he was firing blanks. He finally fessed up that he had a vasectomy. <laughs> I felt so bad for the wife. An entire year trying to have a baby and six months of invasive testing and husband said, said nothing so that was a different story that somebody else said oh no but yeah. it, it seems like it's more common than not which is really sad like, here again with yeah but like why with the second comment why would you want to wait not waste but use all that money knowing that you're the issue because i think he was i think it was like op potentially he's okay with her thinking that it's just not going to happen well that's what i was like if you're really trying to have a baby both to get tested so we know what what the situation is with the two ingredients who's bringing what to the table so there's no i'm not gonna spend a ton of money on her mm -hmm. not knowing what i'm bringing to the table yeah. i'm like even if he didn't have a vasectomy I'm like you could have low sperm count or they're they're just dead they ain't, they ain't swimming they're not <laughs> they're not swimming like they they're should they're just like <laughs> yeah <laughs> You're like, I'm watching him try to get to the egg and he's trying so hard and he falls and he dies. He just shrivels up. Yeah, like, <laughs> so I'm like, you want to know when I'm spending this much money, we need to know what's happening. Mm -hmm. I feel yeah. really bad for the commenter, but I'm like, I feel like the doctor should have been like, we're also testing you yeah. too. But does that maybe make you think that, because the only thing that I'm thinking of is why wouldn't they test for the commenter? Why wouldn't they test him is if he's like, it's not me. It's but, you. But then how does he know? I don't yeah. think doctors trust people. Mm, like I don't think they should. They always hear, they're like, I hear your symptoms, but like, we still need to do tests because you're unreliable. You yeah. don't actually know what you're saying. I'm not going to trust you just saying. I'm they good. go to school for it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm like, bro, you sit with your balls in a microwave all the time. Your, your <laughs> testicles are done. They're shriveled up and old. Yeah. So I don't trust you, patient. I need to <laughs> test it to make sure. I wish you were a doctor. I want to hear you talk <laughs> yeah, to somebody. Yeah, like, yeah, like, bro, I don't believe you. Bro, you're lying to me because I know I know we're lying to our doctors because we're going to our doctors and they're like so you know you're like so how much sex have you had like how many partners have you you're like one and you're like you know you out here in these streets and I know you are tell me the truth because it doesn't help you to lie to me he's like bro you yeah. swiped right on yeah. me yeah. I'm your doctor yeah. <laughs> and you knew that <laughs> And we did meet up for the yeah. day, and it was a nice yeah. time. Well, I've slept with you, so I'm like, I knew you had <laughs> But you never called me back yeah. the next day. So what's up with so, that? Do talking, I need to get tested? Yeah, yeah. I feel like I need to get tested. <laughs> Oh, so people lie, never trust people, always <laughs> test. And I think doctors know that. Yep. Doctors know that because they know you. A little too a little too much. <laughs> a little too much. <laughs> they know the STDs in the country a little too much. <laughs> Do I need to get tested? <laughs> to the Dude, I'm over here calling you late wild. night. <laughs> trying to make sure I can get on this inheritance like this next story. Oh! <laughs> I, was, I was literally going to transition with inheritance. I, did, I couldn't think of anything. I was just like, someone got to do it. <laughs> Would I be the asshole if I don't change my son's name, even though it may cause him to lose an inheritance? Yes. I don't even know the story. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Give him the money. What, I won't change my son's... Would I be the asshole if I don't change my son's name, even though it may cause him to lose an oh, inheritance? Yeah, you are. When it's money, you change that name. <laughs> His inheritance. Hey, I guess how much? I'm That's Sam Musk oh, it's a, Unless it's the last <laughs> Sam Musk. Musk. The last name? I'm getting mm -hmm. that inheritance. Is it feeling musky in here? Because yeah. I've arrived. I'm Sam Zuckerberg. He has the worst last name. <laughs> Sam, what is your last name? Zuckerberg. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting that Facebook money. Money. <laughs> Would I be the asshole if I don't change my son's name, even though it may cause him to lose an inheritance? I, 24, got pregnant while I was taking a gap year traveling. I met an older guy, nothing gross. I was 19, he was 23. Okay. We had fun. Oh. I was working in a bar to make money while I explored his city. 
When I got pregnant, he lost interest really quickly. <laughs> I understood, but I am pro-choice and I chose not to terminate. I went home and had my son. I also made sure to get child support. He could afford it. He did fight it though. I had to prove paternity and everything. Through that, his parents found out they're all well off. They have met my son and they truly do seem to love him. They've provided gifts for his birthday and Christmas. They've helped me with extra money so that I could complete my university without going into debt. They have taken us on vacation with them so they could spend time with him. They aren't my biggest fans, but we're cordial to each other. Three months ago, my son's father passed away. He got oh. drunk at his bachelor party, mm. tripped on the sidewalk, and hit his head. Oh my God. And that was all she wrote. That's all she's. That's what Ladies she said afterwards. And, and I was like, oh my Whoa. God. Safely. <laughs> no yeah. love lost between she them. Said, she said, and that's all she wrote. Oh I'm my like, gosh. <laughs> Um, my son and I attended the funeral. We spent a week in the city so his grandparents could see him. They approached me with an offer. They said they had no other children or grandchildren. Their son was only 28, so he had lots of time to provide them legitimate kids. They did not say this. <laughs> they did not say this. I'm just assuming. Okay. So they never thought <laughs> about like my son's name. They said if I changed his surname to theirs legally, yep. they would make him their primary heir. I think this is dumb. He is their only grandchild and they would deny him an inheritance because of his last name. I said I would consider it to be polite and have left it at that. I actually have a pretty good life as it is. My family has been very supportive and because of the whole court thing, my son's father had to have life insurance with him as the beneficiary. Would it be nice for my kid to get a large sum of money? Yes. Do I want him to have the surname of a man who didn't want him, see him, or love him? No. I have been talking to my family about it and a few of them think I'm being an asshole for giving up this kind of money for my son. It is generational wealth and I'm making this decision based on emotion. <laughs> I think they are assholes for thinking money is the only thing that matters. I think I will tell my son's grandparents that they can talk to him about it when he is 18. He'll be old enough to understand the implications, but young enough not to be tied professionally to his last name. Am I the asshole? Mm. Hey. I guess how old are they? I want, I want to know They're how old five? are the gra grandparents. Yeah, he's probably like five. Oh, oh no, the how old are the grandparents? Yeah, are they going to die anytime soon? Are they going to make it to <laughs> <when he's laughs> <like, laughs> make it to 18? I'm like, they got to lock this in. Yeah. <laughs> Generational oh, wealth? Time. <laughs> That's the part where I'm like, that changes from because I'm like, yeah. I kind of get it. I'm like, even like fifty, hundred thousand dollars are like, that's a lot of money, but am I going to do this? But if it's generational wealth, like, can change the course of our family. Mm hmm. I understand where OP is coming from. From a lesser extent, I know people like I have a single mom and like who, what is my last name? Is it my dad's last name? Like those kind of things were like, you had no say in this. You didn't really do much. So like, why would I name you their last name? It's those, I think they are emotional decisions. They're, they're kind of rooted in emotion. But when it's this, I'm like, I might give you a nickname. I like your nickname would be the other last name, but I'm like, hey, I'm calling you legally gonna be. Yeah. This. I probably would. And I feel like that makes me feel bad, but I feel like I would change the name. Yeah. So I get, yeah, I, I, I'm kind of on the same boat because the only, the only thing I'm also thinking, like it is that rooted emotion feeling, but it's like, realistically, how many times are you going to use that last name? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, you have the first name. The first name also has an emotional tie to it. Like, this is not setting... This is not setting just him up. It's potentially going to be able to set up him yeah. and his kids. And I'm like, oh, for... Uh, I don't know. That's, uh, that's so tough. I, I wonder like if a, you can give him two last names. Yeah, like a, like, a hyphen name. Yeah. Like, yeah. I wonder if they'd be okay with that, where oh, that that's their last yeah. name. Because, mm -hmm. yeah, when I was initially reading this, I was, at first I was like, I mean, I get what she's saying about, but I, then I got to the generational part, where yeah. I, generational wealth part, where I was like, I just don't want my kid to, like, in 18 years be like, so you're the reason why I'm eating ramen noodles in my right, dorm right, right. room right now, because like he in wouldn't debt. Give me a right. last name. He's like, I, you know, yeah. So it's like, I kind of do like the fact where she was like, I'll just wait until he's kind of old enough to make that decision, which yeah. he'll probably say yes anyway. But yeah. I think that's a good reason because I'm thinking about like you're just because he's five now. You're going to school and you're like, wait, why do you have a different last name than your mom? Like those kind of questions. Are like, 
I don't know. It's just my last name. There might be questions like that. Inheritance. Yeah. <laughs> or, I mean, if she wanted to wait till 18 to do, like, for him to make that choice, if she made that choice and then told him at 18, hey, you know, I, I know you've been for years, like, because I think, isn't 18 when you can legally change your name? I don't know. Back or change your name in general? But I, I, she would have to switch, like, his um, social security name. Well, I think. And then, like, if you get a credit card, yeah. w- w- like, at 16, you're applying for jobs. Like, you would have to know if she, like, switches his name and then tells him at 18, actually, your last name is not this and not that. And what you can switch It would come it up because you couldn't, like, enroll in the school yeah. without, you're like, you just lie and say, like, this is the name, like, legally, it's actually this. this. Yeah, I think but she don't should tell explain him. it yeah. to him on a certain level. Maybe not. Because I think also, like, you don't want him to be, like, you're about to get a ton of money, you right. know, because I feel like, I don't know, sometimes when you raise kids with the promise of money and there's, they can kind of become ungrateful for it right. or just have that expectations. It's like, listen, we don't know when your parent, your grandparents are going to die. I'm not hoping for them to die anytime soon. So let's I'm have you not hope for it. <laughs> so let's, <laughs> the sun, that was so dark when yeah. she was like, Oh, what did she say? Yeah, he, he got drunk at the bachelor party, fell. <laughs> and that's all she wrote. She, but after wrote. that, she said, and that's all she wrote. <laughs> I was like, oh my God, you really don't like this guy. But there is a top comment that after I was reading it, I think I am more on the side yeah, of I'm like, curious about the yeah, you might be the asshole for making that decision for him. Somebody said, you're not the asshole, F that dude, but also you're kind of screwing your kid by not changing their name. That money is your child's future, and guess what? They'll probably want it regardless of y'all's beef. Mm -hmm. If they find out, that could also wreck your relationship. Get the bag. You can be honoring the grandparents that have been involved in your son's life, and ultimately your kid can change the name if they don't like it, but the money can allow your child to pursue their dreams without having to worry about the stress of loans. Somebody else said... Yeah, I completely agree not wanting him to have the name of a man who did not want him, but being practical, there's a lot of money there, and if, and if that's all they want, I would make the sacrifice for my son's sake. He should not be punished for his dad being a bad guy. And it's not giving him the last name of a, of a man who didn't want him. It's giving him the last name of his grandparents who did love him mm-hmm. and want him mm. and provide for him and his mother's life in a very meaningful way. I mean, helping with paying for her schooling, that's way more than even most parents would Actually, do for their yeah, adult kids, let true. alone a basic stranger. Yeah. Um, they also took her on vacations and helped pay for things to get her and her son ahead. I would tell them that you don't feel comfortable making such a big choice and that your son will know and make the choice himself when he He's old enough so that comment i was like okay yeah that's because she needs to just switch her perspective because yeah his dad is the one who wasn't a good guy but the parents the grandparents really picked up the slap slack even in taking care of her right yeah because they're like there should be a level of of the the mom that should be taken care of and they they did that for the son who didn't do anything yeah no i agree i think this um story show like demonstrates how like parents issues like around each other if you've had a bad breakup or like whatever influences the child and that yeah. becomes the child's issues when i'm like the child first of all didn't ask to be here right. but we're here let's be civil let's be co-parents right but then it's like no your dad's a bad person your mom's a bad person mm-hmm. and then that influences how the child sees their that parent without allowing that child to actually um figure out their own views and their thoughts Mm -hmm. towards their parents and they might be the opposite yeah because even going along with that it influences their future relationships like if you're like man your mom always does this and you're like well now I don't trust women because the way you talk about my mom or the way you talk about my dad I can't trust how men and women are going to act in relationships because this is how you portrayed it how you pushed it on me yeah yeah Mm -mm -mm. take the money Take the it. money. You gotta take the money. Get the bag, sis. And I know a lot of people are like, money isn't everything. I'm like, I totally agree. But I'm like, money it helps is so much. Money runs yeah. the world. So, I wish I was Elon Musk right now. Okay. I'm well, not Elon. Man. That dude's no. wild. I yeah, actually, no. Yes. Who Reptilian. Do I want? Let, let me be Jeff Bezos on this, y'all. He <laughs> <laughs> flexing on him, man. <laughs> Jeff Bezos said, whoever wins that Coliseum fight, they fight me next. <laughs> <laughs> I get winner. <laughs> you know what I would say yes to? 
What? A proposal from Jeff Bezos. Like, our next star! Oh, we saw it I would get married to him. <laughs> I'm saying that right now. I hey, wouldn't marry the guy. He's already taken. But would Is you get married, married to this girl? No, he's propo- he's um, oh, engaged. He's, he's taken, yeah, Sam. Yeah, he's engaged. Well, that ain't, ain't so what's legal, her name? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Am I the Ooh. asshole for breaking up with my girlfriend after she rejected my proposal not once, but twice? We talked about this. <laughs> where I'm like, never ask someone to marry you unless you know the answer. Because it's really hard to recover from someone saying no. To you. <laughs> surprise yeah. wedding. Don't ever surprise someone with a proposal because it's going to be bad for your relationship if they say no. Yeah. So absolutely. You shouldn't ask twice. You should have been out. Yeah, out. <laughs> <laughs> but I guess it depends. If the first proposal was like, will you marry me? And like in a text, I'm going to say no. Yeah. Nah. Nah. <laughs> But what if it had a ring emoji? <laughs> <laughs> you just sound like that a poop emoji. Yeah, you're like, that's kind of romantic. I I no, you know they send it with the text effects too. Oh, oh yeah. you they glitter the <laughs> fireworks. Yeah. I say, say less. <laughs> <laughs> um, am I the asshole for breaking up with my girlfriend after she rejected my proposal twice? Sierra and I have been dating for four years. Ooh, I absolutely love her and felt like she was my soulmate. I knew I wanted to propose to her two years into dating. She didn't think that. <laughs> but decided to wait one more year so I could get together and be in a better financial situation. Last year, I proposed. It was a private proposal on a beach where we went on our first date. She looked at me and said, I want to marry you, but not right now. She said she wasn't in the right space personally to get engaged and to give her some time. That's fair. That stung, but I was okay with it. After all, I put off proposing so I can be in a good position, and it's only fair that I give her the same chance. It's been a year since then, and I decided to propose again. This time, I asked our friends to help me set it up because I wanted to do something nicer. We orchestrated a nice dinner and proposal in front of a nice fountain in the city's botanical garden. Everything was ready. Dinner was great, and we went to the fountain. She saw the roses and everything, and then I got down on one knee, and I asked her to marry me. She teared up and said, not just yet. (laughs) This stung really bad. I knew I wanted her to be in my life forever, but this is the second time she turned me down. I asked her why, and she said the same thing as last year. I asked her if someone was holding her back, maybe family or a friend, and she just said, I just want to make sure that this will work. This hurt me more than the two rejections. I told her if after four years she isn't sure, (laughs) then what the hell will make her for sure? She asked me to give her some time and I told her no. I told her I'm not going to keep wasting my time and love if she's going to keep saying no. I told her that I can't do this anymore. She began begging me not to leave and said, fine, I'll marry you. Just please don't go. This made me mad, but I didn't say anything. I just left. My phone has been blowing up with some of our friends, her parents, and her telling me that I'm an asshole for throwing away a four-year relationship because she said no and that I was being a big baby that she just needs some time. The other half of our friends aren't on my side, but they're not on hers either. I don't think I'm an asshole for this. Did I overreact? Am I an (laughs) asshole? If so, how much much more time am I supposed to give her? Edit, we're both 29. The second proposal wasn't done in front of my friends. They just helped me plan it and stuff. Mm. And we had discussed marriage shortly before I proposed the first time. She was into it and even told me that she couldn't see herself with anyone else. Mm. She seemed eager about the idea of marriage, which is why I was shocked the first time and then angry the second time. Am I the asshole? No. I I think I, what I usually do in these situations is you switch the genders. If it was the if it was the man who's like, oh, I'm still trying to figure it out. It's been four years. You're like, most people would say, he's just dragging you along. He doesn't want to commit. He doesn't want to do that. That's what she's doing. And especially if it's true that they talked about it and she wants to get married and you propose once, I could see getting past that first. It would be hard for me without like, I could see getting past that first one, but I'm like, a year later and you said you didn't see yourself with anyone else other than me and you do want to get married. What are we doing? We've been together for four years. It is reasonable to get married after four years. I would, I think you're not the asshole. You got to get out of there. Because what is she working on that's taking her so long that is she making strides? Is there yeah. is there any effort being put into this? What are you working on that hasn't happened yet? Yeah. After four years. I agree. I want to one hundred percent agree with 
what you just said like four years what are we doing here <laughs> like it's just a waste of your time and i think that like if she was like if she was like no i want to i'm waiting so i can graduate or there was like an actual yeah. goal or like no i just want to until i'm ready how are you gonna know when you're ready mm-hmm. i think maybe is it like fear she nervous about like being off the market did she have a side thing that she oh. you know like what's going on i'm just, <laughs> I'm just joking she definitely got an amy but side. really though <laughs> why are you saying no yeah like, why are you saying no yeah. if if you love him and you don't want to leave him but he's ready to get married what's stopping you right yeah because like what really what marriage is what is marriage gonna change like at four years i'm assuming they're probably already living together probably probably already like has split the bills and stuff marriage is just a contract under the government really like That's now far, you, you, you kind of have d- uh, <laughs> different benefits now like if your spouse dies then you get the thing but like if so you're saying <laughs> she can kill him <laughs> <laughs> yeah sorry I was just taking family law um, <laughs> <laughs> is a lawyer yeah. she's just, I'm not a lawyer murder she wrote she's basically a lawyer <laughs> murder um, she wrote <laughs> you have a law degree I know that I hope I hope to have a law degree no I don't have a law degree you know what do you you oh. you've been to school. I have you've been to school justice. so long. It's been four years and you haven't got a. <laughs> I have a criminal okay, justice okay. degree. Yeah, yeah. Yvonne and has a criminal justice degree and a paralegal certificate. And degree soon. Mm, 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 mm. <laughs> I'm calling you if I ever go to jail. What'd you say? I'm calling you if I ever go to jail. What'd you say? That girl good. She educated. Hey. <laughs> yeah. I didn't say anything. What'd you say? I said. <laughs> That's what I said. Left the tongue. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, yeah, so let's... you just gotta walk away. Cause if you propose the third time, yeah, you can't three times. I'm never proposing. Anything. I'm not proposing anyone twice. To be yeah, you. but three <laughs> times you can't. That's just something you can't do. Yeah. You don't have respect for yourself. You don't respect yourself. I ain't never proposing to my. Yeah, because how do you get over like a rejection like that? In my you head, can't. I was like, Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! That would be <laughs> that. Uh, that would be so scary to get rejected. Like in the in the way. At least from the story, it seems like they were talking. They were kind of on mutual ground. Right. So then the fact that it's just like, like, I understand, like, you know, I understand the first time, you know, you weren't ready, like, whatever. But it's like, talk about at least where you are. Right. Before, before, don't like, just be like, oh, yeah, I'm totally ready to get married. And then it's like, that's the last thing he has in his head. He's like, oh. What are we doing with our time? Yeah. Let's just get together. So it's like, nah, like you got to like be like, this is, and then update them on the process. Like, this is where I'm at. This is what I mean, but I'm still working on myself. I'm 75% through. Yeah. So yeah, more percentage. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> what, what, what are these strides that are happening? Right. And how do you, at what juncture is it going to be right. time to actually do this? And I, I don't think that's what's happening there. Yeah, totally agree with what everybody said. That's it. Yeah. Maddie does it. Maddie's on the girl side. No, no, I'm not. I'm oh, not. Okay. I agree. Okay. I agree with what I mean. I'm like, there's nothing for me to say because everyone said anything. Yeah. yeah. But definitely not on her side. Um, like you said, I can't imagine like going through that rejection oh. and then trying to do it again. Because at first, when I was reading it, I was he like, "So himself. for the second proposal, he had friends and family." That's there? what. That's what yeah. I was gonna say. He's not the asshole, but he is dumb. But he did say they weren't actually there. They weren't for there. It. But I'm like, you're dumb for doing a second proposal in front of people because it couldn't yeah. be me. Wow, well, I don't know what she's gonna I say. So I missed that part. It sounded like yeah, he they, did. No, it was just private, but it sounded like what he was they saying was they were there, <laughs> but they just planned it beforehand. So they knew about it on, again. This chick doesn't care about anything. So she could say no in front of my dad. My dad's like, that's not my son. <laughs> he gets his own You're no and longer rejected my on son. the same You got rejected day? twice, son. Yikes. And isn't that crazy that like his friends and family are calling him yes. the problem and overreacting? I'm like, how what would did, you feel? What does she tell her parents? Because her, I get parents like trying to like stick up for the kids, but what does she tell the parents that they're like, 
You're the asshole for like. You're like, did you hear that I proposed to your daughter twice? <laughs> and she Four rejected years? me yeah, both and times. Like, and they're like, yeah, that's normal. You gotta. Where I proposed to my wife five <laughs> times. Yeah, like, that might be your family. Yeah. See, back in the day, I used to walk. Yeah. I had to walk to the ring store, yeah. and then I had to walk to her house. It was Every a six-hour day. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, but um. Oh, what was I gonna say? What was I gonna say? I was gonna say uh. Oh. The only thing, I always come back to this, the only thing that could make him wrong mm. is the tone. Like, how did you say it? Because you can say the anything. proposal tone? No, no, afterwards. Marry me. Oh. No, yeah, no, no, no not the proposal tone. Hey, yo. <laughs> hey. Marry me. Hey. Marry me, cuh. Hey, girl. You look good. I look good, man. Marry me. <laughs> Marry me. <laughs> but it's like, if afterwards, what he said, if he was screaming it, or like... Being overly after aggressive. After the first one or the second one? After the second one. Okay, after the second one. I mean, I guess in a sense, kind of justified because you yeah, got rejected yeah, twice. Yeah, I can yell. Yeah. You said no to me twice, I'm yelling. Yeah. <laughs> but what do you like, mean? You're still you're like, yourself. Like, yourself. Like, <laughs> <laughs> but I don't know. As tears are flowing down my face, I'm mad. But tears are flowing because I'm sad too. <laughs> He's frustrated. Because yeah. you're like, it's over. It's, it's done. It's yeah. done. Yeah. It's That's done. why we're all like, um, He's finally realizing everything, and he's just like mad. Like yeah. four years, nothing. Four yeah. years. I really thought you were it. I thought you were it. Like you were the love of my life. Yeah. I'm like, this is it. Like this I, is gonna be my life. I used my money on not one but two proposals. Two proposals. And got rejected. And he's now, like telling the airplane to go away. The airplane's like, now I gotta go flying. face my boys. <laughs> yeah. Congratulations. Get the banner down. It's like I love you. <laughs> Forever. Oh, poor guy. I hope he gets it together though. Because how, how do you show your face to your boys? <laughs> hey man, you got it. twice, man. Nobody want to marry you. You're like, yo, bro, it's so late. Let's meet up at midnight and talk about this, like this next story. Ooh. Come on, be more excited about it, Maddie. I was pretty chill. I was like really, really excited about okay. saying. I mean, he's yeah. sad, he's, so that's how he's saying. He's yeah. like, let's go meet up. Let's go meet up. Okay, am I the asshole for making my son cook for his sister, even if it means cooking at midnight and waking him up? Huh? <laughs> I'm sorry, am I the parent? <laughs> what? Cooking at midnight. Waking him up. Making my son cook food for his sister at midnight. Um, and waking him and up. And waking him up. This kind of reminds me of my mom, because she was, she was a single mom, and she would work a lot. And so we would cook our own food, but we wouldn't wash the dishes. And she would get home, and she would wake us up. She's like, "Wash the dishes." <laughs> I'm like, this is child abuse. <laughs> like, Why do you just wash the dishes? I'm like, because we didn't want to. And she's like, "Then wash them now." So that gives me that vibe. Yeah. Of that. But cooking is a whole other thing. I think. That's wild. You might not be in grade school or something. That'd be crazy. Yeah, oh, you're yeah, like, I'm was... six years old right now. Am I the asshole? So... I'm a six year old boy. <laughs> so I made toaster strudel for her. And... <laughs> I don't I know how to use an oven yet. Yeah, I, so. I didn't give her the icing because I didn't, I didn't want her to enjoy it. <laughs> All right. Am I the asshole for making my son cook for his sister, even if it means cooking at midnight and waking him up? My daughter, 21, gets off of work at 4 a.m. She usually stays up until lunchtime and then sleeps until she goes to work. She works night shift. My son is 17 and still in high school. I'm at work when she's sleeping, but my son was home for the summer and he would wake her up to make him food. He would pester her until she did it so she could go back to sleep. It came to a head a month ago where my daughter lost it and I finally learned about it. Anyways, long conversation and his punishment is he has to make my daughter food when she asked for it at any time, the same amount of times that she did it for him. Oh, so it was about 30 times that he woke her up. <laughs> So he has to make her 30 meals. Everyone agreed, though my son wasn't happy and picked it over losing his phone for a month. So my daughter will wake him up to make her food. He still has 15 meals left. He hates it, but it gets the point across. Now school started and he gets woken up last <laughs> night to make her food. So this morning he was tired as all hell. He went to his grandparents and I got into a huge argument with my mom. She thinks I'm an asshole, but the punishment fits the crime. My son won't talk to me and I'm questioning myself, even though my husband is backing up the punishment. <laughs> the husband's like, yeah. The husband's like, yeah. <laughs> do it, do it. Okay, so I have a few questions. 
Your son's 17. Why can't he not cook for himself? Right, 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 right. Mm, exactly. Well, he definitely can because be, now he's cooking for his sister. Yeah. He knows how to cook. At 12. That is yeah. such a sinister thing to do. I would be so mad as a sister to be like, not only do you know how to cook for yourself, but you know that this is my time when I sleep. So you're waking me up in the dead of the night to cook for you when you know how to cook. Yeah. Well, the fact that she actually did, did it, it 30 times, 30 times she did, that means... She's doing it for every time she actually did it, right? Yeah. Or is it just how many times she got woken up? It's because it, if how she many made times 30 did it. meals, there's no way I could get my sister to make 30. I, I might get, get her to do it once. Yeah, once <laughs> or twice. There's no way my sister's cooking. I think he over annoyed and over. her. He annoyed her and he wouldn't let her go back to bed. I would have brought it up with my mom way sooner than yeah. 30 yeah. times. I would have done that too. And like if he, because then it's like, so if middle of the night so mom and dad are home if he knows not to wake them up why is he waking her up right because he can he maybe with their relationship he can get away with it yeah. until yes. he can't anymore but uh, it seems like a lot of our family relationships we were like no yeah, there's no way <laughs> and ask me again i'm gonna tell mom yep yeah, yeah. i want to cook the first one i'm like I who are like, you <laughs> and i was like i'm like yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, what is wrong i can't believe you actually think i would get i would laugh i would yeah. just put my mom on the phone <laughs> You want to ask her yeah. to do it for you? I would be downstairs, call my mom, get your daughter. Yeah, get, get right. your daughter. <laughs> right. She's get obviously your crazy. There's Dude, something. I, oh, insane. man. If Elise were to do that to me, it wouldn't. Oh, uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> That's I me would. in bed hitting up. <laughs> Just wait, wait. Yeah. And it'll be something crazy. The next time you'll be like thinking everything's all sweet and your room comes in and it's a mess. I'm like, that's what you get for waking me up that time. Yeah. Now have fun cleaning your room up. That's why I do like the punishment. Yeah, that's I a think great it's a punishment. fair punishment. I like that there's a limited number because I hate when people are like, just indefinitely. The fact that there is a number you're counting down, I'm like, yeah, that's your punishment. There is an end date to this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But hey, you, you did the crime. But yeah. I will say that, like, I'm not against it, but when school starts, if he's falling asleep in class, it's gonna be your problem. What's like, his problem? <laughs> <laughs> Consequences. Yeah. He flunks Consequences. Consequences. because he's <laughs> cooking for his sister. That would be kind of bad. Yeah. Maybe they're like, okay, you can't ask. Uh, request for your brother to make a meal a after this time so he can sleep. No, she's like, I'm doing it any time. Yeah. She's like, Mid midnight, sick with power. <laughs> 5 a.m., wake up. No, it's like, it's like some, uh, like three, like where you're like right in that great sleep and it's just like, nah. Get because it. if you got the green light from your parent to bully your kid, <laughs> bully you're your gonna brother. abuse that. Like, that's basically what they're getting. Like, you get to do it, you get to view this whenever you want. Yeah. And you're like, <laughs> Every day this week, I'm going to wake you up at three in the morning, and you can't do anything. Go to mom. Tell her. <laughs> she told me to do she it. Knows. She knows. She knows. It's her idea. But uh, I mean, I do get the school thing, but also I'm like, he probably is. There, there's probably times where I stayed up way later than I was supposed to, like in you know, high school, watching a show. Mm. Whereas he might be up for an hour, so he might lose like an hour of sleep. So maybe it's not that bad. But I think I think the fact that she gets home at four is way worse because for me, my dog usually sleeps with me, and so he wants to get up at like four or five in the morning because he has to go pee. Yeah. I'm like, I don't want to clean up pee tiredly, so let me get up tiredly and open the door so you can go out. Right. And then of course, because he goes out, he wants to eat. So depending on how early it is, I'll like chop up some food for him or whatever. Oh my gosh. But um. I think that's even worse because I get back into bed like an hour or two before I'm supposed to get up. Like I usually get up like six, seven. My alarm goes off at six thirty. I press snooze until seven thirty, <laughs> and um, but that's like the worst because I'm like it's like an hour before I have to be up. So hoping that I can get back to bed, he probably has to get up at like six or seven. Let's say six because he goes to school. She gets off at four, so it's probably like the worst time to be like, "Hey, can you get up for an hour and make me food, and then maybe go back to bed after you're awake?" <laughs> you know, <laughs> shoot, she'd be rich with power. You know, yeah. but hey, he's just getting the exact opposite of what yep. he was giving. Yep. So, yeah. uh, top comment. That's actually a perfect punishment. He woke her up for food, so now he gets to feel what it's like. You also gave him a choice and he picked this one. The point is, he'll be tired when people wake you up for no good reason. While you're making dinner, make yourself a cup of coffee like this <laughs> next story. <laughs> Dang it, he stole it. Yeah, yeah. Am I the asshole for defending my wife after she purposely dumped coffee on a kid? Oh. Purposefully? 
hot coffee on a kid? Burn him a little bit. Yeah, we'll get, we'll I don't know how you can be the asshole. <laughs> Here, this is the adult just. <laughs> like, this is a Nickelodeon movie. What are you doing? <laughs> Nick, Nick, Nick. Why is this coffee orange? Yeah. Do you just or green? Uh, Do you just slime me? I got slimed by my mom. My wife and I are both 34 and kid free. Of course, we know you're yeah. kid free. Yeah, the, the that was easily it all. known that you're kid free. My brother Mac, 28, started dating 30 year old Heather roughly a year ago, and she came with three kids. 12-year-old Anna, who was 100% the problem child. The boys, 6 and 8, are great. Anna, on the other hand, purposely does shit to piss people off at every turn and is extremely defiant, and her mother lets her get away with it. We own a camp on the lake, and once a year, we host a large barbecue and a weekend stay for the entire family. Mac brought Heather and the kids. Anna was a shit all weekend. (laughs) picking fights with people, throwing tantrums, hitting, etc. And Heather just stood back and said, I don't know why she acts like that. Rather than (laughs) doing anything to correct her. My wife was getting noticeably more pissed off as the hours progressed, but nothing like yesterday. Yesterday, we were all sitting out on the deck talking and enjoying a coffee, and Anna was underfoot per usual. She was told to go play with the other kids several times and she refused, finding excuses to be involved in the conversation, which included picking up a fly swatter and swatting at flies around all the adults, knocking over our coffee several times. She was also smacking my wife with the swatter repeatedly, they were saying that there were flies on her when there wasn't. <laughs> My wife at one point looked at Heather and said, either get your kid the F out of here or I'm going to lose my shit. I also spoke to my brother several times about him stepping in. This was following Anna dumping my wife's fresh coffee all over the place, including on her for the second time, cold coffee. My wife doesn't drink hot coffee. Okay, cool. Heather said a clipped and I go play. And that was it. No follow through. Well, Anna comes back in and slaps my wife on the forehead with the swatter and said, bug missed him. My wife took her coffee, her third, that she just made, um, again cold, and flung it at Anna, covering her. Anna immediately starts crying and Heather flips out. So does my brother, saying that my wife was an immature see you next Tuesday and that she is just an effing kid. My wife calmly puts her cup down and continues conversation like nothing happened as Anna, Heather, and Mac are all flipping out. But then Heather says, do you have anything to fucking say for yourself? And my wife says, don't let the door hit you in your demon spawn on the ass on the way out. Some of the adults are maybe are saying maybe an apology is warranted and that we are assholes for not giving one. I personally don't think so. Uh, There were plenty of times when my wife specifically had told Anna to stop. She had even taken the fly swatter from her at one point. Anna went and mocked my wife and then grabbed a new swatter while Heather and my brother ignored Anna and what she was doing. Hence why Anna kept doing it. Several times the other adults spoke up to this kid as well and spoke to Heather about stepping up and telling her kid to stop and actually following through. Many steps were taken before to get to this point. No, my wife shouldn't have had to remove herself from the equation when it's our property and everything was on our dime. My brother, in his sorry excuse of a mom-girlfriend, should have corrected the issue from the beginning. 12 is plenty old enough to know right from wrong. Even her brothers don't pull that BS. Just a quick add, it's not my wife's job to set an example like some of you are saying. We are kid-free for a reason. Anna and her sorry excuse of a mom were warned several times by my wife, me, and other adults. Beyond that, it's just a them issue. So there's that. This hits home for me because it's literally the exact same situation. Like the ages line up and everything. My friend who has three daughters and the oldest one, she's a terror. (laughs) (laughs) She is wild. And for me, I like have a relationship with her because it was like the first baby. She was the first baby in our friend group. And so like we had a connection and... I would hang out a lot with her when they were younger. So I'm like, I have a connection with her. And because of things in her family, I think that's a reason why for her behavior, like why she acts the way she is, because it's just a whole mess of things happening that's beyond her control. But when we're all hanging out as friends and then she's going crazy and she's doing things like, like, I didn't mean to hit you, like those kind of things, you're like. And her mom is just like sitting there. Or she, 
her mom's like mad. She's yelling, stop doing that. But I'm like, it's not having an effect. Mm -hmm. And you're like, what do I do as the person who's not the parent? Because she's just wilding out here. What are you supposed to do in that situation where Mm -hmm. you're like, the kid's acting crazy and you can't, you can't punch a kid like you would just punch an adult if we're going crazy. And you're like, so you're like, stop. Or you joke around. You like try to play with them, but then they keep going with it. And you're like, it's, it's a really awkward place to be in. And when they're coming at you with that and they're just relentless, I can see where you get to the point like, <laughs> but when you're friends, that's your brother, you're like, the only thing you can do is kick them out, mm-hmm. I think. But then like that strains the relationship there. You're like, you have this kid literally ruining your relationship because you don't know how to parent them and so they can't act out. It's just very uncomfortable. I'm like, I feel exactly this is I'm like, I've been in it several times. Mm-hmm. And it's hard when you're not a parent trying to step in on someone else's situation. Especially when it's at your house. Like, yeah. like uh, we've dealt with stuff like that before where we host a lot of family gatherings and we'll have family members come over or like you said, it was kind of a similar situation where I had like um, somebody that's in the family where they brought their daughter but their daughter wasn't disciplined like at all. Yeah. And so there was a point where their daughter like, like it, this was through our Costco phase. So we had like a huge bag of Tostinos like uh, like chips, tortilla chips. Yeah. And uh, she had snuck it down the stairs and dumped it all out on the floor. Oh my gosh. And so it's like, okay, you know, like her dad came and told her not to do, don't do that. Yeah. And then helped clean it up. But yeah. it's like, it's not like you vacuumed it. There's still crap on the right. floor, and now that's a waste of b- ch- chips. Oh, you didn't eat them? I didn't eat them. You just threw them away? Yeah, because it was on the carpet. I mean, some <laughs> chips were landed on other chips, so those chips are safe. <laughs> I don't trust that. <laughs> okay, yeah. I don't trust that. <laughs> but, you know, stuff like that where I've had that experience where you have to deal with family members that don't really do anything with their kids yep. and – because you can totally tell the difference. Like having family that come over where they do yell at their kids and they're on top of it, it's mm-hmm. like really nice because you're like, oh, you know, I don't have to worry about them. But then having the opposite where they do come over and they just let their kids do whatever and they don't ask you like, oh, do you mind if like they're by themselves up here or whatever? Yeah. It's horrible. Mm-hmm. It makes me not want to like host in the future. Yeah. It's, just, yeah. it's too much. And that's why I don't have them at my house. I'm always dealing with them at other people's houses. They know and these kids ain't coming to my house because I can't. If you break my stuff too, just imagining a twelve-year-old person just smacking with a fly swatter, just running, going. Mm. And the I'm mad at the other adults where I said they're punks because they're getting smacked in the face too. They're like, they they know they want to yeah. throw coffee too. They also want to, but they're like, you shouldn't have done that. That was immature. I'm like, what is this? What am I supposed to do? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's a menace. Yeah, just yeah no, I, I'm surprised she lasted that long. Right. Yeah. Two cups of coffee knocked over before the third cup. Of yeah. Coffee. Constantly being hit by a fly swatter. Yeah, I mean, what else can you do besides kicking them out? I was yeah. going to say, what else can you do besides yeah. throwing water in her, or coffee in her face? But there's probably a lot. But Is there at a, a certain point, <laughs> I you don't have know a boundary. It's yeah. being crossed. Yeah. I'm going to show you don't do that anymore. Yeah. I mean, wasn't the most mature thing like you said but it's like she's not she's being annoying her her family isn't doing anything it's some random kid that you don't know because it's a new girlfriend's kid i'm like i don't even know you yeah you're disrespecting my house and i shouldn't be um disciplining a child or exactly knock it off right and you're because like i feel like if um i'm telling the child to knock it out but the mom's not saying anything the kid's like well mom doesn't care so i'm gonna continue doing it but yikes Mm -mm. I always think too it's like when it comes to like the big uh, you know like a big situation like that like when the parents go home or whatever like what are you telling your kid after that is it like oh like this person did this it's all bad you weren't in the wrong or it's like do you tell them hey like technically they did something that was bad, but you caused that. <laughs> like you were the sole right. proprietor of why there was a reaction. You caused a reaction. You didn't. It didn't just come from anywhere. So that I guess that's the one thing I just hope that. I don't think it is happening because they're yeah. acting like that. 
Even though I I do know there's some kids who are just their parenting just they're parenting, but it's just not having any effect yeah. on them. It's and awkward. I think we can end with this story in the comment of the story. Okay. Um, when I was a kid, there was a kid at my church who was younger than me. He was about eight or nine, and he had figured out how to pinch people really hard. He liked that it made people yelp, and he got to interject himself into situations from behind. His parents would scold him, take him aside, take things away from him. It didn't really matter. They couldn't really stop him. He pinched my mom, who whipped around and grabbed his arm really hard and said right in his face, if you pinch me again, I'm going to pinch you back, and you're not going to like it. You've been warned. <laughs> he looked a little disconcerted and looked at his parents, who just looked back at him silently. The next day... <laughs> <laughs> the next week he was pinching people again and he pinched my mom she grabbed him and pinched the shit out of his arm really hard fingernails and all ripped his skin off <laughs> a chunk of his skin <laughs> and she had big strong hands he, oh, mom. oh no <laughs> he yelped and looked at his parents who looked at him lovely and said she warned you and turned their back on him oh, no, no, no. <laughs> mom straight right. up <laughs> that was it he stopped he finally understood that it hurt but a huge part of it was that their parents didn't defend him you think that anna would learn from this but not if the parents defend her all right well um thank you everybody for joining us for the comfort level podcast yes. thank you yvonne for being thank back you, on bon You're welcome. Bon 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 <laughs> and my fellow ottomans we love you <laughs> We coffee love tables. you. Look at that. We'll see you later. <laughs> Convertibles. We Buy coffee Ottomans. tables. <laughs> and again, and again, we can nix all of this. Yeah, if you, you guys, guys come ones, up with the cooler one. Ones. I hate Ottomans so much. <laughs> I'm sure you, you guys probably hate convertibles and coffee tables isn't even a it's real just weird. <laughs> fandom. <laughs> it's just strange. Completely. Ottomans Let is cook. horrible. Yeah. Think of cook. the meaning of Ottomans. That's stupid. Autumn is so good and I'm loving it more and more so I can't wait to you all vote on that or maybe like an acronym for like like this next story like wait we'll think about it Lintons. you think about it you put it in the comments you let us know yeah let's Coffee simmer tapes. on this let's not make any hasty quick decisions I don't think that's a smart nope. idea if fine. everything falls through we'll just say Autumn ends we'll and just I think not that's what we all agree on we'll just we'll just no, go we'll back just... to being like hey guys <laughs> anyway <laughs> bye bye, bye. Couchmates. <laughs>